Captain and Tangela too. And our host, Vincent Van Gogh. Can he bring it to ya? Creature features and all creatures. to read this but they insist with a purposeful grimace and a terrible sound he pulls the spitting high tension wires down helpless people on a subway train scream bug-eyed as he looks in on them I've yet still to understand this sonnet those have to be the most ludicrous lyrics I've ever heard in my entire life. They sound like something you might have penned. Impossible. I wrote songs about everyday items. For example, did you know I scribed an entire symphony about cheese? Yes, I do know, and unfortunately I've heard it as well. Wonderful. Now, let us attend to our guests, shall we? Welcome to Creature Features. I'm your host, Vincent, the musical... Puritan to my right, who refuses to appreciate the absolute splendor of my symphony number no. 12 in C. Cheddar, is my butler, Mr. Livingston, and the adorable ingenue to this side, whose bite is far worse than her bark, is my young ward and legal fee encumbrance, the typically tenacious Miss Tangella. And do we have a most colossal program in store just for you? First up, despite my reference to that gormless Godzilla song, we shall not screen a Godzilla picture tonight. However, we do have the very next best thing, Daimajan from 1966. This is an incredible film about a spirit trapped in a mountain that is freed into a tall statue by young people from a village seeking revenge upon a tyrant. The monster is portrayed by Riki Hashimoto, which is a rather pleasant sounding name for someone who portrays an angry Japanese version of the Jolly Green Giant. I might also mention here that all dialogue in tonight's film shall be in the original Japanese language. There will be none of this horrid dubbing we see in other kaiju films. So if you understand Japanese, bonus points for you! For those who do not, English subtitles shall be provided. Children and adults over 10 years of age should have no issue keeping up. Those aged 9 and under should be in bed now unless they can read English fluently. And joining us to watch this fabulous offering from the Far East shall be my friend and Tangela's cage-fighting teacher, Miss Megan Farnham. She's a mixed martial artist and a mixed drink artist as well. She'll tell us about what it's like to be a strong young woman beating up grown men, as if we didn't already know and also impart upon us what it is like to bounce people both out of dive bars and caged arenas while still retaining her trademark beauty, grace, wit, and charm. So don't go away, for it is to be another night of giant monster cage fighting fright right here on Creature Features! <coughs> Stay tuned! Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. This brief moment of tranquility has been brought to you by Nightscape. Relax and sleep better every single night with this and other videos from our free YouTube channel. Learn more by visiting nightscape.co today. Welcome! 
Welcome to Creature Features. It's that time of the weekend, you know, that time where you switch on your telly and put on our program. And we've got Megan Farnham with us tonight. Megan, yeah. how are you? I'm absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much for How was me. the trip out to the mansion? It was glorious. It's a beautiful day. She's and... been out here 10 billion times, mm -hmm. but today was a nice drive. You know, typically yeah. you have to drive through fog and ghosts, mm -hmm. right? Many ghosts, but that's my favorite part. So. No, no ghosts no, no, no ghost tonight. No ghosts tonight. All right, yeah. so how have you been? Uh, life is amazing. I have no complaints. Yes. Lots well, of traveling. She's lots amazing. Of and oh. you're going to learn all about Megan in a moment. But uh, so kind. This, this thing with Tangela, she's off hiding. I know. I, Why is she so I think I think she's going to put on one of these kung fu uniforms. That so excited to see. Saw, uh, no, no, no. So, <laughs> Megan, I mean, where do we start with you? You are a fighter. <laughs> one way to put it, yes. But you like you don't look like a typical fighter. Something I like about mm -hmm. doing it. I got a lot of um, disagreements from that when I first started because I when I started training I didn't you know look like a boy. But this is a little dress up. I'm I'm usually a little bit more casual at times. But I, I don't like think to you've ever looked like a boy. Oh, thank you. That's what I like no, to hear. No. So <laughs> so how did you get into this whole fighting thing? Um, well, when I was younger, uh, a lot of uh, little girls would like watching Disney movies. Um, I watched Mighty Ducks or. Um, karate Kid, Good for you. things of that nature. Right, yeah, right. and um, always really loved uh, Challenge and Human Triumph versus like mm -hmm. love stories and fairy tales. Right. And uh, as I tried a little bit when I was younger, I was always an athlete, many different sports. But when I turned 24, my mother uh, passed away and I needed something to focus on. And mm -hmm. I was training at a local gym, NorCal Fighting Alliance, and right. I decided to dive in. And then I started training quite you. seriously after that. Well, you that. know, at least you applied it to something like this and you did not, like, go to war. No. Well, in a way, yeah. I did many, many times, actually. Right, but not <laughs> against an entire civilization of Correct. others. Right? As in, right. yes, No, one-on-one -on -one fighting. Yeah. All right. So uh, we're going to watch Die Imagine, and you saw a little bit of it, but I did. I, I did. I did watch it. the I whole did. thing. Mm -hmm. I've not seen the whole thing either because, you know, it looks like a frightening movie. There's quite a few moments. No, his eyes. <laughs> I saw... A a part with eyes and his eyes frighten me. Yeah, so. gruesome. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we say we start this and then uh, when we come back, we're going to find out more about what you do. Exciting. All right. Off we go to Dimagine, 1966. Um, subtitles you got to read. Sorry. See you soon. <laughs> Earthquakes in Japan. Who would have thought? So many, apparently. No, it's a good thing there's no nuclear facilities nearby this island where mm. they're filming this because you know what happens there. Double Speaking reactions. Right, overreacting. Overreactions. Right. So somebody was telling me during the break that everyone thinks you look like Katy Perry. <laughs> Absolutely everyone, yes. How often do you hear this? Uh, multiple times a day, especially multiple doing what I do. <laughs> bartending and whatnot. Yeah, I, I've met Katy Perry. You do not look like Katy Perry. Or she does not look like you. You know, she's I got a big wart does on she? her chin. Yes, it's like, it's this huge wart. I guilty say that no. makes me very happy giant, here. She has giant feet. Does she now? No, she wears these clown shoes. <laughs> no, she looks like Bozo the Clown sometimes. And You're then, just buttering me no, up. No, and she has her elbows. Look, show me your elbows. See, you have feminine elbows. She has manly elbows. Mm, tell no. me more. She smashes things with them. I've seen I her also smash, smash things with them. A Brazil nut. A Brazil nut. Anyways, I want to hear about your first fight. Oh, the debut cage fighting. Um, it was probably still to this day one of my favorite days ever. Uh, Are you, were you not frightened? I was very, but I, I was very well prepared. I mm. have an incredible head coach, a man named Dave Dennison, and he is. Um, he went above and beyond, um, and it was very exciting. Um, my father was in attendance that night for the right. first time. He had never seen what I had done before. Right. Um, it was a combination of people who were very excited to see my hard work and very curious to see if I would fail, which You excited. did not? I did not. No. I did not. Um, I have a, a thing about proving people wrong. It, it uh, motivates me in, in quite the way. So, so how could I try this now? <laughs> how, how could you prove me wrong? What, what if I said that uh, I am a leprechaun? 
I would How would actually you prove me wrong? agree with you, perhaps You'd, a little see, bit. She would. Now, I don't think I would Irish, argue right? that, perhaps. You're a bit no. Irish, right? I am very Irish, actually. I, w I wish I was Irish. You would. I feel like you have that energy of a leprechaun, but in a in a different form of sense. No, it's, it's only because I like Lucky Charms cereal. <laughs> Definitely. That's only, that makes too That's much. the only thing Irish or leprechaun about mm -hmm. me is I like Lucky Charms. Absolutely. Anyways, you won this fight. I did. You won I the did. fight, I, and? I, it was it was. You marvelous. still have the trophy. Um, um, it wasn't a, a trophy, but the video is up, and it was a uh, it was my very first debut. And um, the girl who came in, her name was Amanda. She was wonderful. Um, it was over in a minute fifty nine seconds. What do you mean she was wonderful? She was wonderful. So a lot of people don't she understand. She was your battle enemy. She, she was, and she was the contender. Uh huh. I wasn't allowed to speak to her before because I'm right. a naturally friendly person, and my coaches were like, "Oh right, you mean and uh, focus." So did they do the thing where they put you together and made you make the faces? We did. Another? We made the faces. I giggled. I was not really good at doing the tough part. I did the tough part in the ring, and and I. Uh, had this face <laughs> but we had to stand there they had to waste some time actually so at the beginning of the fight when some things in the background had to be taken care of they had each opponents meet in the ring and just sit there and the dj went off and they kind of introduced and let the crowd go and we were just looking at each other and i looked at her and said let's have some fun and it it was it was glorious how wonderful yeah I you know, this so could only fun. happen in women's sports because if men if it was two men they'd be sitting there like spitting upon each other i like have that. seen that and no, women do that as well, but no, um, I, don't know. I enjoy it too much. It's You're way too ladylike for that. Hmm. All right, I'm getting the signal. We've got to get back to this film. And yeah. uh, when we come back, I want to hear some more about Perfect. this whole I'd fighting love to tell thing. You. All right, off we go back to Dimogen, 1966. Don't you dare go away, because if you do, I'll be sad, and Megan is going to come beat you up. Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. And welcome back to the show. Miss Megan had to step away for a quick moment. Do you suppose she went to get some boxing supplies? I don't think so. No? She's dressed awfully nice to be doing boxing tonight, especially with those shoes. No. I think she's touching up her makeup. Oh, all right. Well, we're going to take this opportunity to do our mail because uh, they people said it's mail, right? And we, we have to look. From England. From England, no less. I know this place. All right, what have we got, Mr. Livingston? From Bristol on Avon. Oh, I've never been there. Have you? Sounds like a nice place. Creature features, what do we got? Oh my goodness. All right, I'm going to grab the note, which is long. I wanna pass this to the young lady. You know, she's like our version of Vanna White. She's, she could have her own game show, right? She is a game show. She is a game show of a, of a, of a sort. All right, this is from, what's his name again? Martin Norrish. That's a very British name, right? Norish. Right? And uh, he goes, uh, Dear Creature Features, I would like to start by saying that I think you are a truly fantastic team and your creepy house is superb. Secondly, Vincent, I think you are a really great host and really superb at introducing films and guest stars. Well, that's, that's quite a compliment, is it not? It could be taken as one. He's always so negative. And uh, your style is excellent. Thirdly, Mr. Livingston is surely the ideal butler. And fourthly, I think that Tangella is drop dead gorgeous. You know, she looks kind of dead with those sunglasses. I don't know, where'd she get those hideous things? It looks like her eyes are bleeding. Those are her bleeding hot eyeglasses. All right, she's really gorgeous, has a lovely smile, and is a terrific dancer. I love the gramophone as well. And as for the red and green Christmas video, Tangela's rendition of 
dense of the sugar plum fairy is the most definitely the ideal accompaniment to any christmas gathering i would agree you know she's actually a rather good singer even though she doesn't talk that much next i would like to ask vincent as a rock musician what instruments have you played do you write your own songs and do you prefer songs as such or purely instrumental music and i'd like to recommend a creepy pop record as well we'll get to that in a moment all right so his question uh, as a rock musician which instruments have you played i played everything i can still play everything right unfortunately no no no. well I, i'm classically trained so i learn music theory so if you give me any instrument and just tell me where the notes are i could play music right after a fashion no no i could play you just because you don't like my music does not mean it's not music right it's not that i don't like it i don't appreciate it you know i pay him well and he continues to insult me we, we've got to revisit this whole arrangement i think it should be the other way around all right and i'd like to recommend a creepy pop record black cat woman by Jordy. it would be great for a halloween disco and mr livingston who does the cooking at your creepy house well we have a chef right and i assist he he does he's for the specialties he's, he's like the sous chef you know because if he doesn't like the food he would sue the restaurant right perhaps he has no sense of humor the man was born without a humor bone a funny bone i believe uh who are your favorite guests on the show oh he's not going to answer that i'll tell you that right now he won't do that now tangela have you ever met any aliens she's met aliens did you learn to dance and where did you learn to dance so absolutely brilliantly she won't answer that either you know, you're going to ask a lot of questions here that are not going to be answered. You've got to send all the questions to me, and then perhaps I can answer them. How would you personally deal with the creature from the film Alien? He she wouldn't would have a chance. No, she loved that film. All right. What creature features do you keep up the good work? And before I go, could I suggest a dance that Tangela and Mr. Livingston could do together? It's called The Vampire Waltz, and it goes something like this. Tangela and Mr. Livingston stand side by side, and then step forward, and then step to the left, and then step to the right, and then turn towards one another and bite. You know, that's, that almost sounds like uh, the time warp. Let's do the time warp again. Again. Right, something like that. Anyways, uh, uh, best wishes, Martin Norris. Sh sh show us what he sent us. He sent us a gift. What did he sent? Tell me what he sent. Oh, chockies. Look at this. Actual British chockies. Right, classic. Thorntons, right. Oh, and another one as well. Oh, my goodness. Let me see. This is called Milk Tray Cadbury. Cadbury this course. is wonderful. Classic British. Oh, very nice. All right. You know who's going to eat all of those. This one. All right. Next up, Mr. Livingston. This is one is from Oklahoma City. Oklahoma. O Scott Buzzard. It's a bloke's name. Scott Buzzard. Buzzard? No. Buzzard, look. This is bloody Buzzard right there. Buzzard. Bizarre. Bizarre. He's bizarre. All right. What have we here? S somebody open this for us. Is the money going to fall out? Sometimes this happens to me. All right. Here goes. Dear Vincent Livingston and Tangela, I really enjoy the show every week. The episode with Bog and Batman was great. We love Bog and Batman. I laughed at the skit where Tangela drove off in the Batmobile. It's like it's like the Joker got away, except she's the Joker. Well, she's Batman the Batman did not appreciate that. No, mm -hmm. but he got he got his automobile back. Can you please send me an autograph photo of the three of you? Svengooli has already sent me a personal autograph. I sent two letters by email, but neither were answered. Hope this fares better, Scott Buzzard. Just the way it says. And where's he from? Oklahoma City. Oklahoma. Oklahoma. City. Well, you know. Yes, we will send you. If Svenguli sent you one, I, we should make him prove that Svenguli sent one before we send one. Right? And how will we do that? We would make him send us a fax, right? He could put the photo in the fax machine and fax it to us, right? He could scan it and email it. But that's in complicated. These modern Why times. don't you just use the fax? <laughs> just the fax, ma'am. Thank you, Scott. All right, last package. Last package from Pittsburgh, California. Pittsburgh, California. Hmm. 
Now, I never did understand why there's a Pittsburgh in California. I mean, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, maybe. Pittsburgh, England. Oh, look at this knife. Look, somebody went to a lot of effort on this. All right, I'm going to let, let her open this. And I shall read the note. Creature features. This is from what city? Pittsburgh. Oh, look, there's money. Look, I knew there'd be money. Somebody always sends us money. It's kind of nice. It's like hitting a tip for, a doing, tip. for doing a silly show. And this is from... What's the box say? Does it even say where it's from? Pittsburgh, California. Oh, Pittsburgh, California. All right. So, uh, from whom? Is there a name? There's no name here. Oh, Steve. Steve. Steve in Pittsburgh. All right. Dear Vincent Livingston and Tangella, I'm a big fan. You have made horror movies fun again. Well, thank you, sir. Enclose us a little something for the mansion and Tangella. I would love to see some action figures of the three of you in the Creature Feature store, please. Yeah, action figure. What would somebody do with an action figure of us? I Put me in a chair and make me watch films. Can't so think you, of it. Make no. you shine the silver. Make her torture poor Andrew. Uh, please, somebody make this happen. I know I speak for all horror fans of the show. Keep up the great programming. A CF fan forever. Steve, P.S. and close. It's $20 cash. Can you please send me an autographed photo? Yes, we can. And see, you don't have to get one from Sven Gulli to get one from us, do you? So uh, I shall keep this. You shall keep this. I think it's upside down. Oh, that's wonderful. What is it? It's a shield. A coat of arms. It's a coat of arms. That's wonderful. What's it say? It says mansion. <clears throat> oh, nice. All right. Oh, and it, look Look at this. It's an alien. She likes aliens. It's an alien. Right, right. It says Tangella. Very nice. That's fitting. Is oh, that this it? is for the mansion, and that is for Tangella. Oh, That's that makes sense. Means. All right. Is that it? That's it. That is it for mail. Thank if you'd goodness. like to send us mail of your own by email, send it to the address you see appearing over here. Or if you'd like to send a package with Chalkies or an alien, send it to the address you see appearing right here. We'll be uh, right back soon with Megan, but first let's get back to Dimagin. Portions of Creature Features are brought to you by the Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Explore the mystery at winchestermysteryhouse.com. Those are absolutely fabulous shoes. Thank you, my darling. Where'd you get those? Um, I dare not say, because I don't want to see another woman wearing them. That's a good point. <laughs> I was going to buy a pair for myself. Oh, how about I just gift them to you, then? Or, no, It'll no, stay no, our no. little secret. I need the, the larger size. Yes, they might. They It'll might. never fit me. All right, welcome back. Uh, we are watching Dimension with, you know, I don't even know how to say that correctly. Dimension, Dimension. 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 Something like that, you know. I, I, I should learn Japanese. It sounds good the way you say I it. I should learn Japanese and then come back. And, Absolutely. Right. Next project. All right. All right. Anyways, uh, the film, uh, there was three of these films, mm -hmm. right? Very this popular. is the first. And there was two more because I, I suppose this film was so successful in People Japan. People love the story of the samurai. Is that what it is? True. But even when that giant 70 foot high stone... Samurai. It's really around the people and the culture of the Japanese people. Oh, there course. are many different yeah. categories, yeah. but they all live a very disciplined and right. family oriented and focused life, and that's yeah. in all of the movies. Well, have you ever been to Japan? I have not, but I've studied the culture very Beautiful much. Beautiful country. I cannot wait to yeah, experience absolutely it. Absolutely wonderful. Mount Fuji. Oh, it's how he's got water. snow. And you know what? I believe it's a volcano. Do you? No, it's going to go off someday. Mm. It'll be terrible. I think volcanoes are such a beautiful thing. I just wish they, they didn't cause so much damage. Well, you know, we have, uh, what's the one up here? Mount St. Helens? Mm -hmm. No. Is it Mount St. Helens? Well, we have quite a few. And being that we're on the uh, shock fault of the right. largest. No. They keep saying we're supposed to fall into the ocean, but we'll see if that No, happens. we're on the Cascadia Fault. <laughs> it's no, it, it will fall into the ocean one day. There's going to be no creature features. There's going to be no mag I because think we'll we fell in the ocean. We just might be a little ghostly after Is that. that it? All right. So um, you also 
do you work behind a bar? I do very much and enjoy it. Actually. And you were telling me during the break that you have a special format you like, which mm -hmm. is called speakeasy? Uh, yeah, I craft cocktailing. Uh, some people call it mixology. Some people can't stand that word. Um, what I really like to do is a certain form of it. I right. mix botany, uh, uh, which is herbs and growing, things of that nature. Um, so I built a garden and I every kind of herb I could think of and fruits and vegetables and I take it from the garden to the bar, um, whether it's dried or um, introduced to a cocktail that way and then I build it all. Some of them are up to 12 steps. You create foams, light things on fire, smoke uh, whiskeys with cinnamon and tobacco. Is there some kind of alchemy book that you use or are you inventing these things? A little bit of both. There was definitely some studying involved but I, I've kind of just always had a natural you know, little glitch to it. I, I cook a lot. Um, I'm very good at um, combining odd flavors. So one of the tricks I do use is I, I like to dine out a lot and I'll find a really nice bar that has wonderful cocktails and I try and see what they used and then avoid all of those which will narrow things down. And most places do the opposite. They want to mimic what is working. And so it'll limit me to some very strange things. Like one time I made a cocktail with persimmon, grapefruit, and peppercorn because it was a fall season and I had a ton of them on the property. And I have a persimmon tree as well. Ooh, aren't they delicious? They're no, sweet and pumpkin-like. No, I cannot -like. stand them. You can't? Some no, people adore this is the them. the bitterest fruit I've ever tasted in my life. Add a little spiced rum, some vanilla, some other magical things, cinnamon, and it'll be a whole You're different You're a chemist. Bottle. Many ways. Okay. I do love science and chemist. the chemistry of it is exactly what I fall in love with. So yes. you build these 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 alchemy type Creations, drinks. Creations, yes. I like to call them potions. Potions. But, yes. All right. Well we're gonna learn Natural more about your potions. potions when we come back. Yeah. But first let's get back to uh Daimajin. Mm, I'm so excited. Dai Dai That's what I'm gonna say, Daimajin. Daimajin. All right, off we go, don't go away. Bye. Hi, my name is Colleen. I'm from Ukiah, California. When I was a teenager, I watched Bob Wilkins every Saturday night, and my friends would come and we'd laugh and we'd have a wonderful time. Thank you for keeping me young. I love you all so much. Bye-bye. Hello, this is Livingston. Apparently, one of my newly acquired domestic duties is to request help for our show financially by asking you to visit our patron page. Your generosity will help keep Creature Features on the air, which I'm not entirely sure is a good thing. However, with only a few dollars a month from you, your kindness will allow us to continue creating new programming each week, which apparently some of you curiously enjoy. And should you have the desire to give even more, you might even receive a gift from Ms. Tangella. I think not. Please visit the website below to learn more. Thank you. So is it Daimajin? Daimajin. 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 You know, our director, Daimajin. Tom, says that there was like five different names for this film, and that's why I'm having So they couldn't confusion. figure it out either. Right. No, no, no. I think, <laughs> I feel better I think about we should give now. it a new name. I think it should be Giant Stone Guy. I think that is perfectly accurate to what the, I want. An American name. <laughs> an right? American name. Giant Stone. So we can read all the American No, because you know what people are going to think is this Giant Stone Guy. Guy. Mm. We don't want to portray something like this. So perhaps Giant Man of Stone. Giant Man of Stone. Di giant. We are watching Giant Man of Stone. Welcome back to the program. Creature Features, our guest tonight is Megan Farnham, who is uh, you, you, you're something of a ninja. Something of one. Something I, of a ninja. I do I mean, love that word. You know, she does not keep her face covered, her identity. Maybe, maybe when you do like 
serendipitous type. Uh, Absolutely, you know, sneaking yeah, of yeah. sorts. Sneaky, she's sneaky. Mm-hmm. Anyways, uh, we were talking about she does she does martial arts training. She trains Sanjela, but she also does bartending. Do. And she's combined the two <laughs> with bouncing. Correct. <laughs> so I want to know what is the biggest person you've ever bounced? Uh, 6'4", 365 pounds or so, and by the neck. Um, I was not. You ever... bounced them. <laughs> yes. Oh my I've goodness. had to quite a few times. I was never actually a bouncer. I was always bartending, but I have had to remove quite a few people now, did you, uh, throughout did you, the years. Did you use Kung Fu? No. Um, if anything, Muay Thai. Muay um, Thai. There's a thing in Muay Thai called the Thai Clinch. Right. And combined with the time that I was doing Jiu Jitsu, um, no matter your size and no matter how strong you are, nobody can do anything without their neck or being able to breathe. So. Of course. You know, you run up and you lock hold and you just don't let go. And then so it's big almost, men fall hard. It's, it, like it's almost like that. you're a ninja version of Mr. Spock. Ooh. And you do a neck pinch of some kind, but it's different. It's a grab. Slightly. It's a takes, grab. Takes all the arms and a oh lock. And then I hold on for dear life until they... So you actually drag this person out as well? Yes. Um, I've had to defend people at times. I've had to uh, drag a big guy. But usually, I mean, I don't end up alone for too long, but there's... One time I had to prove a bit of a point. He was being very disrespectful to a lady, and I don't like to watch Good that too for much. You. So, so, mm-hmm. so you, you kicked his butt. Quite literally. You, you right kicked his bottom. Bottom. And sent him down the road. Yeah, it was by the neck right at the end of it. And then the rest of the gentlemen who were actually bouncers of the evening took, took over, and I hopped right behind the bar with a smile and continued chucking drinks. As Mixing your mixology. My now, equation. you know, I've always wondered about this. If somebody gets booted from a bar, mm-hmm. do you have, like, an area in the back that looks like a post office wall where you have not wanted <laughs> with like a photo. An 86th list. An 86th list, yes. So usually it's a binder. Um, a sometimes binder. it's a board with photos. Right. Um, right. However, most of the time when people are kicked out, they're just gone for the evening. Give them a chance. You know, you don't have to worry too much. Say, right. hey, sleep it off. Come back right. with a better attitude. Right. If it's really bad, it could be a month. But if you're never allowed in a bar again, you've definitely earned it and you are in a binder somewhere. For sure. My goodness. So so every night before work, you've got to look in the binder. Check, make sure you know the faces. Oh, Because mm-hmm. wow. you want to avoid them being able to get in and be removed. You right. just tell them at the door that they have already, you know. That's clever. Been told. That's mm-hmm. clever. They get My pretty goodness. upset about that. Most people aren't sober when they show up. Right. And they don't care to be turned away too often. No, not from a bar. You know, it's like, oh, well, perhaps they will not let me into the opera, but they'll let me into a bar. No, no. you're in the binder. Yeah, you're in the binder. You're in the binder. Don't get yourselves into the binder. Well, speaking of binders, let's uh, get into the binder that is this film, which we will call the Giant Man of Stone. Giant Man of Stone. Giant Man of Stone. Diamond in the Rough. Diamond in the Rough. And uh, when we come back, uh, we're going to find out uh, what you're up to next, right? Very exciting. All right, off we go. Dimagin 1966. See you later. It's little cousin it. This is Livingston. And you're watching Creature Features. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Creature Features. We are watching Daimajin. Daimajin-ish. 
1966, with the wonderful Megan Farnham. She is a uh, she's a ninja. She's a professional ninja, and she's <laughs> no, no, no. She she is showing Tangella how to be a, a ninja. And you know, I am I'm indeed. A, I'm a bit troubled with that thought. You should be. I mean. You know, she's already got all these weapons and things that she uses. She'll use anything as a weapon. She's used this. She smashed this over somebody's she's head smart. once. smart. No, but I mean, oh, why does she need to learn mixed martial arts if she knows how to use the weapons already? So she doesn't get arrested. Oh. Mm. Well, that's good for me. I hear there's been a little bit of bullying involved. Some teasing, perhaps. We, oh, we went over. She informed me of. So maybe a little hands-on hands instead uh, of... No. Uh, Andrew, he does not bully her. He just teases oh, her. Oh, slightly. I hear no, different. He, he, called her, he called her little cousin It the other day. No, no, no. He called her little cousin It, and she tossed a frying pan. I think that's an acceptable reaction to such things. With a frying pan, just for calling her little cousin It. Well, next time it's going to be a bit of a combination, a little more difficult to handle than a frying pan. She beats him within inches of his <laughs> life. No, just last week, he was dressed, he dressed up as Svenguli Ooh. and took a spot. She came home and she like smashed him within inches of his life with a frying pan. It makes me so proud. But well, we're going to not use any of your trained skills. Not yet. But we are bit by bit. And she's learning very quickly. And well, she's she going to be study. quite dangerous. Yeah. But he'll be able to keep his life this time. So maybe the teasing uh, will go both yeah, ways now. Yeah. Well, you know, either way, I pay for it. If, <laughs> she gets, if she goes to jail, I pay the bail. If he goes to the hospital... So then you should I be happy I'm teaching her so that we can avoid both of those situations. No, and you can I, just think, be I think what she's going to do annoying. is she's just going to put him down with a, with a roundhouse kick to the face. Exactly. And then she's still going to use the frying pan to smash him over the head. She does like a roundhouse kick to the face. However, there is another move that she is quite good at. Tell me. Shall I? Do you remember that tie clinch I told you about earlier? Yes. I decided to teach her um, one of those. Oh that goodness. thing that I took that big man right, and bounced him right. out of the bar. Yeah, all right. Well, so she's going to be able to handle herself just well, fine. I, I know she was reading books about waterboarding, so mm -hmm. I think this would be better than Could waterboarding. Could add that in after. You cannot waterboard your handyman. <laughs> Who true. says you can't? Right, right. So, uh, Meg, if people want to learn more about what you do, where yep. do we go? Um, well, I do have an Instagram that is open to everyone. It is MagicMaker1111. MagicMaker1111. And we can see photographs of what? On um, it's a combination side. of different things. Um, I have my hands in quite a few different cookie jars. So you will be able to see my traveling, uh, martial arts, and things that I'm working on with that, as well as um, uh, Speakeasy and the craft cocktails that we were talking about. Um, my garden, the herbs, and Fabulous. the magic behind... So all, of, it's, all of those things. It's, it's like a kaleidoscope into the life of Megan. Yes. Right? Yes, right? I do. Perfect. I enjoy, I enjoy yeah. adventures and um, spontaneous learning, I like to say. Right. So a right. little bit right. of everything. She's yeah. an international woman of mystery. Mm. Right. I like right. the way that sounds. All right. Let's say we finish up this film. And uh, when we come back, uh, we're going to uh, hang out, right? All right. Off we so go exactly. to the end soon of Dai Jamin. And uh, we'll see you soon. That is the conclusion of this movie, whose name I cannot properly pronounce. So uh, the, the, the statue crumbled. It, he turns Over back a teardrop. A teardrop. On the toesies. No, that, that would not happen in real life. Mm, no, people a have fallen for much less. <laughs> in real life, a teardrop would not destroy a stone man monster. Demon of I know sorts. A demon stone man monster. Oh, magic works in mysterious ways, I know, though. I know. Well, anyway, not a bad film. Uh, it was nicely done. Thank you. I mean, it's almost like uh, I enjoyed it very much. Uh, cinematic in the sense of like a western. 
like a grand western. Yeah. Right. Who knows? Who knows? Anyways, uh, what are you doing next, Megan? Um, uh, personally, I just I'm watching a bunch of the amazing students and teammates that I have uh, prepare for the IKF World Championships. IKF. International Kickboxing Federation. Oh, how fun. Uh, it's how people get started and continue a career in Muay Thai. So it is not the same as cage fighting right. with mixed martial arts. Right. It is specifically uh, Muay Thai. And it's an incredible organization. And um, it, the invitationals and the level of athletes there are, are quite, quite impressive. And all ages, too. Young, young to older. So are you going to fight? I will be in, at in attendance. Right. And whether I will be competing is still a secret. Uh, Not yet announced. Yeah, all right. All right. So Her and I have been chatting about right, that. A little right. Right. So, but you're going to be there as I will. If, if nothing else. If as nothing a, else, supporting my team right, and right. Um, some people that I am incredibly proud of. Yes. How wonderful. Absolutely. Good, good, good. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on thank the show. Thank you for having me. Megan, and taking care of her. You know, it does keep I her out continue. of trouble. Or put her in it just degree. slightly. No, no, no. I, I suppose it's it's good that she can kick butt now and then. Absolutely. Without having to actually use weaponry. Little bottom. Right, right, right little bottom. All right, next time you're in the neighborhood, come by and see us, all right? I would be so happy to. I would be glad. All right, and as far as you guys go, thank you so much for staying up late and watching our program. We know some of you on the East Coast, have to, they have to stay up till like 3 o'clock in the morning Ooh, to watch our show. And I, I feel hour. terrible about this, <laughs> but there's not much I could do because we're in a different time zone and that's what happens. But uh, do you know that we love you, Tangela loves you, and Livingston is growing quite fond of you. That's what I hear, right? Mm. Maybe. We'll see. Anyways, we'll see you next week. Different movie, different guest. Don't know what, don't know who, but it'll be fun. Bye. So, uh, Megan, you know, with all this training you do, I'm thinking maybe I should learn how to do these martial arts as well. What do you think? <laughs> Were you looking to get your bottom kicked? <laughs>